Calaveras County, and welcome to the 23rd annual Concourse d'Elegance here at Ironstone Vineyards, just outside of Murphy's. I'm Mike Taylor, and this show is something else in Calaveras County. Hundreds and hundreds of antique cars that aren't exactly restored, they're just here showing off their beauty. So let's take a look and see just how much this show does for 4-H and FFA students up and down California. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all this man and his wife's fault, this concourse d'elegance. This is John Cowitz, the owner of Ironstone Vineyards. And John, you actually designed the amphitheater here at the winery with this show in mind, didn't you? We certainly did. And uh, uh, we had a group that uh, did a lot of entertaining for us. And so I got them out here and I said, uh, what direction do we want to put this stage? And so we get the max use out of it and the sunlight just right. And so that's how it all came about. And it's got that fantastic driveway that leads the parade of winners right up onto the stage. That's a really smart piece of design too. That was a masterful piece <laughs> because uh, we've been to Pebble Beach and we've been to a lot of the other concourses and a lot of them have a wooden platform that uh, the cars have to drive up over or try to. And uh, we said, let's design this whole amphitheater that every car in it can uh, park. And then they got a driveway over to the main driveway, which goes right across the stage and back down to their parking place. And everybody gets to see all those winners. I heard this morning, John, and correct me if I'm wrong, that now the Concourse Foundation has donated over a million dollars to FFA and 4-H across the state. That is true, and uh, we've had a very excellent year with sponsors this year again, and so um, we're very proud of that, and we're very proud of our youth in ag. You bet. You guys have always been real good cheerleaders for ag up and down the state, but what got you so involved with uh, 4-H and FFA? Well, my wife was a 4-H leader for probably 35 oh, years, wow. okay. and... Um, I was president of uh, Lodi Chapter Number no. 1, FFA, when I was in high school in 48. Nice. And so um, we've been very involved in California Young Farmers and then National Outstanding Young Farmers of the Nation. And we've been very involved in ag period. That's fantastic. Well, I think for myself and for Calaveras County, I'm going to say congratulations and thank you. This concourse is such a beautiful event and it has done so much for youth across the state. So thanks a lot, John. You're very welcome and we're very proud of what we've created here from ground zero and uh, hope that many people come and enjoy it like we're enjoying it. Thank you. You bet and thank you, John and Gail. Folks, this is Larry from San Jose, and already we have to give you congratulations. Your car just got best of class. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. What is this beautiful Cadillac? So this is a 1959 Cadillac Eldorado Beer Ritz. And in 59, this was the top of the line model. The most expensive, the flashiest convertible that Cadillac built that year and probably ever since. Um, and I've owned the car probably uh, close to 40 years now. Did you buy it new? I did not buy it new, okay. no, because see, I'm only 39 at this point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was about 20 years old at the time. I've had it almost 40 years, and I always wanted one. It came available, and um, it was not in the condition that you see it in today. It's gone through a complete restoration, wow. and, um, which is a very difficult endeavor on a car like this. It's a very complex car, and um, so I restored it about, uh, about 13 years ago and show it occasionally. How does a big giant car like this handle out on the roads here in Calaveras County? It goes uh, in a straight line very nicely. <laughs> Doesn't handle the curves very well, but it's for what it is, it, it handles quite well. It's on uh, factory air suspension, which all Eldorados came standard with. Many of them were converted. They weren't very reliable. 
and um, but I put it all back to the way it was when it was new, and it, it, it drives and handles beautifully. How many shows a year do you put this beautiful you know, machine you know, in? I've shown it probably half a dozen times since 06 when it was restored. Last year, showed it at Pebble Beach and took first in class at Pebble Beach. Nice! So that was, it was, you know, Pebble Beach winning a first in class at Pebble Beach is like getting an Academy Award for the car hobby. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it was very, very special because the car is very special to me. I've had it, as I say, 40 years. And uh, I loved these when I was a toddler. You know, I, I, I just thought they were fantastic. I've been a car collector since I was two. Wow. <laughs> I just played with the little ones that you could put in your pocket. <laughs> now yeah. I've graduated to the real thing that are 200 square feet a piece and <laughs> take up buildings. You know, we have a lot of cars in our collection. This and is one of them. Finally, Larry, the Concourse d'Elegance. Have you been here before? Yeah, many times. Many times we've shown cars from the from the 30s through the through the 70s. So we have a lot of different types of cars. Uh, and yes, we uh, we always make it a point to come here every what do you, year. What do you like about? A, you know, it's a casual event. Um, it's uh, the the awards and the judging is not based on a point scale. It's very casual. So you're not under the gun to make sure that everything is absolutely perfect. Yeah. It's, it's casual and and um, and uh, there's a lot of different types of cars being shown here, uh, which is uh, you know appealing to a lot of different car. A lot of car collectors are a little put off by certain car shows because yeah. if they don't feel their car is perfect in every way, they can't bring it. Well, that's you know it's bad for the car hobby because then these cars never get out. Uh, not that we take our cars out that often, but for yeah. this event, we'll we'll do it. And the weather's beautiful here this year, and uh, it sure is. It's it's a lovely event, really is. Well, it is a beautiful machine, Larry, and thanks so much for sharing. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You bet. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mark and Victoria with a 1966, 68 AMX, and this car has a story and a half. Mark, why don't you start it, and we'll kind of go from there. Okay, well, actually, the, well, the story of this car uh, begins in 1968 when American Motors uh, put this car together and they delivered it to the West Coast. Uh, and, and this car this car was ordered by Playboy, actually, to award to this lady right here, uh, Victoria Vetri. Uh, this car was her grand prize for being their, named their Playmate of the Year. Playmate of the Year, Victoria. How was it to get this car for that? Well, I just, I'm an actress also, and I used to work as Angela Dorian. And then when I did Rosemary's Baby, the director said, Angela, can you think of an Italian name? I said, how about Vittoria Vitri? He said, what are you doing with that sunken ship, the Andrea Doria? <laughs> so I went back to my real name. So when I sign autographs now, I write Victoria Vitri, a.k.a. also known as Victoria Vitri. And this car is more famous than I am, but that's fine. <laughs> well, and it's, it's gone from sort of rags to riches, too. Yes. You've got a book with some photos of it where it just looks like it's almost ready for the junkyard. What happened? Well, that's the condition it was in when I bought it. I mean, she she had the car for 42 years, and then I came along in 2010, and I saw a gem in the rough, and uh, bought the car, uh, and I put it in hiding for two years until I, it took almost all the savings I had to buy the car at the time. Wow! I put it in, uh, I hid the car for two years and plotted its restoration, and then it took three years, the actual restoration of the car. We had, we took every nut and bolt off this car, had it on the rotisserie, and cleaned every inch of paint off. Wow, and you got it painted, the classic pink. Yeah, like. My gosh, so what is cool about this car aside from its story? What's cool about these AMXs? Well, it's, uh, it, it, was, it was probably the, I don't know, me personally, I own another AMX. So mm -hmm. to me, the AMX is, is the cool car to me. Yeah. This was probably the flagship car that American Motors made. Probably, the, it's, right now, it's the most most sought after a car, I, I would say. Wow. It's just a cool car. It has the, the lines of the car, the, the design. 50 years later, it's still a cool looking car. <laughs> yeah. And you told me something kind of funny when we started talking before we started filming. When you bought the car, it came with something. What did it come with? Well, well I didn't know it at the time, but uh, I didn't know it at the time, but eventually it would come about that uh, this lady here would, uh, I, I would begin a, a friendship with her. And now she actually lives with me. So I, at the time, when I bought the car, I didn't know that she came with it. <laughs> Be still my heart. I love it. <laughs> Victoria, how often do you get to drive this beautiful car? I don't drive that much anymore. I'm just a uh, kickback, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. a spring chicken. Buck, 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 buck. But other than that, I'm, I'm very happy. Yeah. 
And so it's kind of a show car now because it's got this incredible story with the Playboy connection, right? Yeah, yeah it, it's a trailer queen. We, uh, it doesn't see much actual highway road. Yeah, well, great. Mark, Victoria, thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the concourse. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, Todd and Jennifer, father and daughter, just got out of those funky Amphi cars. What was that like? It was fantastic. We've gone a couple years and ridden them. It's really nice. What do you like about getting in that car that goes in the water, Todd? Well, the fun part was actually going in and getting out. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's pretty fun, yeah. Where are you guys from? Uh, I'm from Felton. Oh, okay. And how often have you come, how many times have you been to the concourse? Yeah. Third, Third year time? here. Yeah. yeah. What do you enjoy about this show? I love all the vintage camper trailers. They're yeah. my favorite. They let you go inside. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. That and an Amphicar ride. Yeah, of course. Every year. You bet. Every all year. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank Thanks you. So much. Folks, this is Steve, and I'm thrilled because this car is from Mountain Ranch. Steve, what have we got here? It's a 1965 Alfa Romeo Julia Spider, and it's fantastic. Yeah. Was... And do you drive this beauty up and down Mountain Ranch Road? Not as much as I should. <laughs> I, I should drive it more. Yeah. And how long have you had her? Uh, it's been in the family since the late 70s. Wow, okay. Uh, my, brother, my brother found it in a backyard um, and bought it for a couple of hundred bucks. Uh, wow. he, he, drove it, he drove it to high school. Then he, oh, up, man. then he upgraded to a VW bus and left this one behind. <laughs> uh, and then I drove it in high school, which was fantastic until I wrecked it. Uh-oh. That's right. And then it sat in the garage for mm, for about 25, 30 years. Really? And yeah. how long did it take to bring it back to this beautiful condition? It took about probably three years. Really? Okay. Right. Did you do the work yourself? I, I did not. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I would have I would have ruined it further. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you enjoy about owning an unusual car like this? It's just, a, it's a work of art. I get to drive it and it, you, yeah. you, you drive it and the, the sound of the motor, the smell of the oil, it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's unique. Yeah. Yeah. And what's your favorite drive in this vehicle? <laughs> anytime, I anytime. Get a anytime I get a chance, really. <laughs> you bet, you bet. And uh, speaking of the Concourse d'Elegance, how many times have you been here for this show? This is the second year. I brought it second last year, year and yeah. uh, so this is the second year. And interesting note is my, my brother has, uh, we've got another one of these in the family. Same year, same model. Uh, it's down in Southern California, so I'm trying to convince him to bring it up for next year so that you we've bet. got two side by side. Yeah, and what do you think about this show now that you've been here two years? Uh, it's beautiful. It, it, uh, it's amazing the, the, the uh, number of cars they get, the different cars. Uh, people are just, everyone's so nice. It's, it's yeah. uh, wonderful. And look around you, it couldn't be nicer. Beautiful. It's a great showcase for chrome and everything automotive, isn't it? So long as it doesn't rain. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the one thing we're watching for this year, Steve, thank you very much. And folks, we'll keep an eye out for this one on Calaveras County Roads. <laughs> Folks, now, if you have watched our concourse shows before, you've probably seen Debbie and Michael Smith on the show before, but with a different vehicle. What have you got here at the show this time, Debbie? We have our 1968 Chinook Mobile Lodge motorhome. And uh, Michael was telling me it's got an interesting history. When you guys ultimately purchased it, it was, well, it needed to be gutted. Actually, it had been gutted by the second owner, took, took out a lot of the original items in it. They took out the original shower, bathroom area, they took out the kitchen, oh. they took out the back. You know, they put cots in and a little table with a stove. I, I'm not sure why, but and yeah. threw, so and they, threw everything away. They took all the comforts of home out of it. That's how, how strange. But anyway, this vehicle, 
is living in Nevada now and it's it got a history. It's been all Nevada, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Uh, the original owner lived in Carson City, up Lake Tahoe, Carson City area, mm -hmm. and she would go to Baja every winter drive it down to Baja until she got old enough that the doctors told her she could not drive it anymore. Oh my gosh. So. And so she sold it, but that other owner came in between yes. and did the damage to it. How long did it take you guys to kind of reconfigure it and put it back together and start using it? It really wasn't too terribly long. He's incredibly talented. <laughs> so uh, we talked about three or four months maybe, um, oh. talked about how we wanted the layout to look. We did it about 90% of original layout nice. in it. Uh, managed to find the original stove and oven for it, put oh, it, man. put that back in, which was not easy, but, and then configured the back a little more livable for our tastes. Yeah. yeah. How does a vehicle like this drive around on our roads today? It's just fine. It actually, the original Dodge motor would have been a 318. Uh, it was not too terribly peppy uh, at that time yeah. and uh, needed some work. It was going to be $5,000 to rework it. And mm. we said, okay, new engine. New engine. <laughs> new engine. Yeah. So it has a Crate 350. Uh, uh, let's see what Tur Turbo 400 uh, transmission in it and a gear vendor overdrive. So more updated uh, mechanics. It's not an RV that you pull out in front of on the road, is it? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yeah, they do. What do you enjoy most about kind of having these older camp vehicles? Well, we just have a ball with the people. Mm -hmm. First first of all is the people. We have dear friends. We've been doing this. We've been doing this show for almost 20 years. Yeah. We've been doing vintage trailers for almost 25, kind of before they were a thing, and met have met some of our best lifelong friends doing this and then coming to this show such wonderful people the cars everything's so much fun and getting out tonight we'll be camping right here there we stayed go. here last night stayed here tonight and we're going to be headed up to one of the other campsites and they'll be playing guitars and we'll be singing and just having a ball getting together so you're camping we after are. the concourse that's fantastic and you were saying that uh, Tucker, your little four-legged friend, camps a lot with you. Does he have his own special spot inside the motorhome? Uh, this is a dog who has to be touching a human being to sleep oh. at night. So his special spot is between us <laughs> <laughs> at night. Uh, he has a seat with me up front when we're going down the road. So nice. he loves it. Loves it. He's a good camp dog. And you mentioned it a little bit, but talk about the Concourse d'Elegance a little bit. This show, you've been coming so long. Why do you keep coming back? Well, it's the nicest KOA we've ever camped at, <laughs> so comes complete with a winery, so what's, what's not to love? Yeah. But um, we really believe in the event and the causes that it supports. You FFA, bet. 4-H, I think is a little bit of an underserved uh, group anymore, getting yeah. more and more important, and it's, in, it's just something that we really believe in, and the fact that the Kautzes and Gail uh, have donated a million dollars they were announcing yeah. to FFA and 4-H yeah. and the ag projects it's just amazing and and so that's what keeps us coming um, being here with friends camping and then it, for a concourse show the people here are so nice and so much fun yeah. any car that you go to look at they're just a lot of fun to be around so it's it's just an, a very enjoyable event to be at well, I will officially, unofficially welcome you guys back to Calaveras County anytime because I love the vehicles you guys bring and enjoy the rest of the concourse. Thank you. We'll you be bet. back to Angel's Camp for New Year's. Perfect. Yeah, we, uh, we've uh, camped there several years. We get a group of the people that are here right now. We'll all be here New Year's and camping out. Nice. So we'll yeah. see you ringing in 2020. Yeah. We will be back. All right. Thank you. You bet. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have history with us, and it's from Murphy's. Paul Tournay yeah, from, Murphy's. from Murphy's. You have restored these two Jeeps, and I'm gonna let you tell us all about them, because I'm calling them a Jeep, and I realize this one's a Ford, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, th yes, this is a 1942 Ford, and it was built in December of 1942, and uh, Ford built roughly 270,000 Jeeps for the Army war effort in uh -huh. World War II unlike Willis, but every Ford had to be, the, the parts had to be interchangeable between Willis wow. and Ford, so that sometimes you'll find these that they'll have Willis parts on them, or, or Willis will have Ford parts on them. Yeah. And that was mainly because they had to 
you know, to support the war effort, they had to be co compatible to one another. So yeah. uh, it, wherever they could find a part, they'd stick it on it. Yeah. Uh, this one, uh, I've restored not not a complete restoration, but more to maintain it and keep it as it was originally. Yeah. And uh, it has pretty much the, the, what you might find on a Jeep that was in Normandy. Okay. Okay, and that's the way I wanted it to look. So I didn't want it to look pretty, you know. I yeah. wanted it to look like it had been battle. Yeah. Well, like it's been out there rolling around on the beach, so exactly. to speak. Exactly, Mike, yeah. and that's what it is. Now, this is, all of the weapons on this are non-active, okay. but they are original weapons. Wow. This is a, a, a Browning machine gun here, mm -hmm. and then the, this is a Thompson over here. Wow. Uh, and uh, that, that's a uh, M1 Grand, mm -hmm. and then a, a carbine, yeah. and then a 45 pistol. So oh we gosh. wanted this Jeep to look like it was just came out of Normandy. Yeah, I had to find some dusty roads to drive it on to make <laughs> it look like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, the, the Navy Jeep. And then, here. yeah, next door is is her Jeep. Well, yeah, <laughs> I call it a Barbie Jeep because that one <laughs> that one has been totally restored from yeah. the ground up. I did that after I retired. It was a project for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is a 1942, what they call a slack grill. Oh. And if, if you look at the front of them, the, the grill between this one and that one is different. That, that grill on the, on the Willis is, was hand built. Oh. And when Ford got into production, they said, you know, enough of this stuff. We want to just make it easy. And they came out with a press grill, which was lighter. Yeah. And, and uh, cost effective. It was a lot cheaper to build, you know. Which one drives better? But they both drive about the same. Do they? Yeah. And is that terrible or is that not too bad? Or A Jeep is a Jeep. It's not about comfort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about comfort. Now, uh, folks in Calaveras County have probably seen both of these vehicles in parades around here, haven't uh, they? Mostly that one because yeah. I don't I haven't used this one. Okay. I just I just started oh, about a year and a half ago when the, w with uh, putting it back into condition, you know. Uh -huh. And, uh, and, and, and everything that I've put on here is World War II. It's, it's, not, it's not reproduction stuff or anything like yeah. that. And I wanted original equipment. I found the bicycle. That, it was a, a Triumph bicycle that they actually, when they were in Normandy, uh, you know, they could use that as a messenger bike if they wow. needed to go if, in a, in in place. So, uh, yeah, everything here is is, what is that's a, a a radio that weighs probably 800 pounds, but it was a field radio where they could oh carry. My gosh. Yeah. So, so, so you had to be built like a jeep in order to carry said radio around the battlefield. I don't know how these guys that were 120 pounds handled these Did things. Yeah. yeah, they yeah. were small. It's a, and, yeah. And why these Jeeps, Paul? What? How come you got into restoring these? Well, they're pretty straightforward. And I and I and a friend of mine, when when I first retired, said, "Paul, you need a project." <laughs> and and I said, "Yeah, well, what am I going to do?" And he said, "Why don't you restore a Jeep?" Because he had a restored Jeep. Ah. And uh, he he was a great friend. I've lost him, but. Uh -oh. uh, he got me involved with it. Yeah. And when we started to do the restoration on that, he helped me tear it apart, but he never helped me put it back together. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so yeah, I figured well, that he, part out. Myself. He was going to make it a competition, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we used to have a lot of fun, do a lot of parades and stuff like that, you know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Bill got me involved with that one, and, and uh, it's, been, it's been a great hobby because they're pretty straightforward. You can. If you if you know where to search for parts, you can find them. And, you can find them. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, I imagine there's a network of of folks that are kind of really into this, and they're keeping track of what's available where. That's exactly right, Mike. Now, last two weeks ago, I was at a swap meet uh, in Plymouth uh, that they do, and they'll do a uh, the military vehicle preservation group wow. does a does a swap meet up there. It'll be in the spring at the uh, Plymouth uh, uh, Fairgrounds. Fairgrounds. Amador County Fairgrounds. Yeah, Amador yeah. Fairgrounds. And then they do uh, do one in the fall. Wow. Uh, and it's it's just a lot of fun because there's a lot of people that are, they, they just get a 
you they're, know, they're into it. Yeah, well, you know, it's history, and yeah. that's, that's yeah. what that was the other thing that got me involved with it because it is history, you know. Yeah. Well, and then real quick, just to finish up, I know it's in your backyard, but what about the Concourse d'Elegance? You've been here before. What do you think of this event? Oh, this is a super event for Calaveras County. It really is. And uh, Gail Kaus does a wonderful job of putting this all together. Yeah. And it's a great venue. Yeah. And, and, and they just make it like home, you know? It's, yeah. It's, it's fun. Yeah. They treat everybody with... You know, it doesn't matter whether you're driving a Rolls Royce or a World War II Jeep. You bet. It, everybody's treated the same. And well, and great. sometimes the World War II Jeep is a little cooler than that fancy <laughs> pants Rolls Royce, right? Uh, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Paul, thank you so much for sharing, and we'll look forward to seeing you at another Calaveras County event. Well, we'll be there. Thank you, Mike. You bet. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with Barbara from Newcastle, who's here with her husband, Jim, and they have one of the funkiest cars I think here at the 2019 concourse. Barbara, tell us about this beauty. This car started its life out as a 1964 Fiat 850 Coupe and this Italian designer Michelotti bought 80 of them, took them to his design studio in Torino, Italy and customized each one. They either have rattan or wicker interior. The dash, the bucket seats and the bench seat in the bath are all wicker in this car. And I noticed that that's what caught my eye actually folks is, and you'll see, the, the seat was designed to fit in this car. And I thought, wow, really, with the wicker? With the wicker and then the interior has teak, teak wood in the middle, as well as on the sides, there's ladder sides. And the top goes off and the back goes down and then you have your convertible. Oh so. my gosh, and how does a beautiful little car like this handle? It handles like oh, just a little old car. I mean, the <laughs> car is 1964 and yeah. it's all the original engine. It's a little four-cylinder and it's just fun to drive. Everybody just takes a double take, look at it, and they enjoy it. And that's what it's all about. Now, real quick, Barbara, give us the story because this is actually Cleo's car. This is Cleo was a client of my former boss working in Southern California. We moved up to Northern California and Cleo and I stayed in touch. And I would call her, we would go down and have lunch with her. And as the years went on, she was an elderly lady at the time. And one day, Jim and I were at a car show and I called Cleo to see how she was doing. And she said that she wasn't doing very well. And I said, "Is you know, what is going on? She says, I'm just not feeling well, Barb. And I just wanted to ask you, uh, being that you and Jim have old cars, you like old, you have old furniture that you refinished, would you like my little car? And I told her, I oh said, I God. feel feel so honored. And I said, Cleo, you have five children. She says, yeah, I have five children, Barb, but you like old cars, you and Jim. Would you like my old car? And I said, uh, we would be honored, Cleo. Just be honored to have your car. And I refer to it to this day as Cleo's car. Cleo's car. And Cleo's car this year got an award of merit. It did. It got an award of merit. It was the first time that we had brought the car to, uh, to Ironstone, and uh, we're tickled to death. We really are. Everybody's enjoying it, and that's what we brought it out for. That's perfect. And have you and Jim brought cars to the concourse before? We have. We went, came last year and the year before. We have a 1961 Chrysler 300G, mm. and uh, that's also a lot of fun to drive. What do you like about this show? The diversity. The diversity yeah. of the cars and just the people are all down to earth, very nice, and just love to talk about their vehicles. And that's what it's all about is sharing with other people. Just like you and Jim have. Barbara, thank you so much for sharing Cleo's car with us. And we look forward to seeing you at future concourse I events. Hope so. Thank you very much. You bet. You have a nice day. I've got Gabby and Cheyenne here with Calaveras FFA. You guys are kind of the reason that this show happens. So what does FFA do for you, Gabby? Um, FFA has taught me a lot of communication skills and um, gets me... Oh, it's made me a better person. Yeah. <laughs> and you, Cheyenne? FFA has taught me a lot of leadership skills that I would use in my career or college or future things such as interviews and um, 
and a lot of other like life skills such as public speaking and um, and it's just a very great organization. And out here at the Concourse d'Elegance, what have you guys been doing today? What is, is your kind of role here at the show? Um, we talk to a lot of people and we're selling um, raffle tickets. Um, yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> have you been to the show before? Uh, I came last night. Okay, so you, you were here for the, was that Stars and Cars? Is that what that dinner was called, I think? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And what else do you enjoy about this show, Cheyenne? I, I love classic cars, yeah. so I just really like to walk around and talk to people and get to know their cars. And It's a very great experience, and I can potentially meet a new buyer as well for my animal. There you go, because they're always working to find those buyers for animals at the fair. What are your projects this year? Um, I raise lambs. Okay. I am doing chickens and, pol and poultry and chickens are the same thing, um, and a replacement heifer. Oh, okay. What's a replacement heifer? A replacement heifer is a pregnant female cow that I would sell to, say, a rancher who's looking for another calf to birth and sure, expand okay. their um, production. And then this whole event was, was birthed, no pun intended, uh, to support 4-H and FFA. So what do you think about an event like this doing so much to support the organization? Um, I'm really appreciative. Yeah. And um, uh, next. That's it. <laughs> and Cheyenne? I think it's great because it keeps the organizations going and um, brings excitement for the future of agriculture. Great. So there you have it, the future of agriculture in California. Now, folks, this is Dennis, and believe it or not, this car lives in Twainheart. Dennis, what is this beautiful piece of racing history? This is a 1967 Beach Mark IV-B Series 2 sports racer uh, that was uh, campaigned uh, from 67 all the way up to about 84, 85. And then, uh, unfortunately, like all race cars, they became abandoned and left in a barn for, for a number of decades until I uh, was able to acquire it and uh, restore it back to the way it was in 1967. How long did it take you to restore it? It's interesting because the exterior is gorgeous, but the interior is, as most race cars, pretty rudimentary. Well, uh, it, only, it took six months, but it was six months full-time uh, from uh, September to early March, and uh, I, I got a, a t uh, the frame and a body from the uh, previous owner and a few suspension components, uh, but the rest I had to fabricate. So the roll bar is fabricated for my height because wow. the originals were very low and almost ineffective, and uh, built the suspension components and uh, reskinned the interior. Um, installed new fuel cells and built an engine, bought a gearbox and uh, bought all the other parts you need to put together and uh, brought it back to life. Wow, I noticed you put the fuel in right next to your left arm. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> well, it's a fuel bladder, so it's, uh, it's safe from that standpoint. And the fuel tanks back in the day were actually located there behind the driver. Wow. And back in the day, they were just an aluminum can to which the fuel was stored. But, uh, you know, the safety improvements of having fuel bladder, aircraft fuel bladders now allow us to, uh, you know, it could be all crumpled up and that bladder is not going to leak. Yeah, that's great. Now, you said this was kind of designed to hold you. I was going to ask you, do you do you get in and zip this car on? or? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, for me, uh, I guess I, you would call me a full-figured uh, individual. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a tight fit, and I spent many days. Ma I had to make the seat. I uh -huh. bought a seat that I thought would fit me. It was like just a f an inch off, an angle off here and there. So I ended up having to make the seat because I had to get my rear end low enough in the car. I had to have the seat back at the right angle because the biggest problem is my legs wouldn't fit in there without hitting the knees on the dash. So anyway, yeah. it took many days of work and making my own seat to finally get myself to sit exactly uh, with the pedals and all the rest and the steering wheel to, to make it work. But yeah, it's a, it's a, a big guy in a little car. <laughs> And then, of course, the, the $64,000 question, what's it like to drive? Oh, it's, it's great fun. Uh, it's, it's very light. It's only 1,050 pounds without, wow. without me in it. Uh, 
So it's one of those sort of things that you can scrub off. Uh, pow uh, you know, if the car gets out of shape on you, it's so light that you just you know scrub off the, the speed. Uh, it's very responsive. It handles beautifully. Nice. It, it's just a wonderful car to drive. It really is. But you can't drive it out on the regular roads, can you? No, it's a proper race car, yeah. purpose-built race car. Uh, it sits too low. It's only two and a half inches off the ground. Wow. So Yeah. Nice, Dennis. And finally, what do you think about the Ironstorm Concourse? Have you been here before? Oh, yeah, I love it. Uh, I've been here for, I guess, uh, seven or eight years. I usually bring my shadow race cars here, uh, but uh, we finished the beach this year, and then my buddies here, these good friends here, have the other cars with us. We said, hey, we got to bring all our cars here at the same time. Nice. And, uh, put them together and show them together and we race them together so we have a great time. We all pit, pat, pit in the paddock together. Uh, it's just a ton of fun, the three of us going out. That's great. Well, thanks a lot, Dennis, and enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. It's great. We you love bet. it here. Appreciate it. Oh, 
done by Jocelyn Gomez of Bret Hart FSA. Thank you, Jocelyn. And we have an FFA free speaker. Jaden DeCosta from Brett. The FFA Creek. I believe in the future of agriculture with a faith form not of words but of deeds. Achievements won by the present and past generations of agriculture and the promise of better days through better ways. Even as the better things we now enjoy have come to us from the struggles of former years. I believe that to live and work on farm or to be engaged in other agricultural pursuits is pleasant as well as challenging, for I know the joys and discoveries of agricultural life and hold an inborn fondness for those associations which, even now of discouragement, I cannot deny. I believe in leadership from ourselves and respect from others. I believe in my own ability to work efficiently and think clearly with such knowledge and skill as I can secure, and the ability of progressive agriculture to serve our own, and the public interest in producing and marketing the product of our soil. I believe in less dependence on begging and more power in bargaining, and a life abundant and enough honest will to help make it so for others as well as myself, and less need for charity and more of it will be. And being happy myself and playing square with those whose happiness depends upon me. I believe that American agriculture can and will hold true to the best traditions of our national life, and that I can exert an influence in my home and community, which will stand solid for my part in that inspiring path. All right, in Class A, our antique cars through 1925. The winner, first prize, goes to Tom and Joanne Martindale from Santa Cruz with a 1921 Page Daytona Speedster. And you've got to see this. Joanne is in the drawer on the other side of the car. And when they stop for their photo over there, be sure you catch that. It's the most unique seating operation I think I've ever seen. In our Class B, Vintage, 1926 through 1942, our first place car is a 1939 Lincoln Zephyr Business Coupe, which belongs to Mark Furman, who hails from Zurich, Switzerland. The long drive. Beautiful Lincoln Zephyr. The height of streamlining in 1939. And in our American and European Classics Open Division, first prize, Paul Petrovich from Sacramento, California with a 1930 Duesenberg Model J Murphy Convertible Roadster. This was the ultimate car in 1930. 265 horsepower, overhead valve straight eight. Every movie star who was anyone had a Duesenberg. They were the standard of the automotive industry in the 1930s. Beautiful car. Incidentally, it won its class at Pebble Beach just a month or so ago. And in American and European classics, closed. We have a 1933 Chrysler Model CL Imperial LeBaron close coupled sedan. This is the Lorenzo Nanini family from Pine Grove, California. Beautiful car, very low production, high performance. Chrysler's top of the line for 1933. Car has won numerous awards and we're pleased it took a first in class here at Ironstone today. Next, from our collection of Pierce Arrow automobiles, we have a 
Bob Jacobson from Los Altos, California with a 1933 Pierce Arrow model 1242 convertible sedan with coachwork by LeBaron. Pierce was a very low production, very high quality company. A beautiful car. The headlights molded into the fenders was their trademark from their earliest days. And the other P in luxury cars in our Packard class, Gary Marchetti from Vista, California with a 1931 Packard Model 826 sedan. Beautifully done, first prize in the Packard class. Straight eight cylinder, four speed transmission, a true luxury car. We had a beautiful collection of Hudson's down by the lake today. I hope you got down there to see all of them, but we have the rarest one of all. First place in the Hudson class, Chris and Michelle Roth from Thousand Oaks, California, with a 1954 Hudson Italia. The Italia was a, a custom-built car by the Carrosseria Touring in Italy and is an extremely rare, the, probably the rarest Hudson ever built. And here is a perfect example at Ironstone, all the way from Thousand Oaks. And winning the Cars by the Pound class in our Cadillac Dream Convertible collection. First prize, Larry Camuso and Kirk Wentland from San Jose, a 1959 Cadillac Eldorado Biarritz Convertible. This was the pinnacle of the tail fin era. And a beautifully styled car. This was the top of the line Cadillac. Very rare car. It also is a former Pebble Beach Concord first prize winner. We had a really fun group of, of AMX products. This was an American Motors car as they uh, moved into the, the pony car or muscle car market. And this was a shortened version, and the AMX was in production for just a few years. Very rare cars. This is a 1970 AMC AMX, brought to us by Tony Lucas, all the way from Abbotsford, Abbotsford British Columbia. Thank you for making the trek all the way to Ironstone. And next, in our pre-World War II preservation class, meaning unrestored, we have an incredible car. This is Steve Marini from Danville, California, who brought us a 1933 Cadillac V16 all-weather Phaeton. And I just have to tell you a brief story. In 1933, the depth of depression, Cadillac only built eight of these cars. Four of them are known to exist. Until Steve found this car, only three were known to exist. This particular car was displayed at the Century of Progress exhibition in 1933 in Chicago. It has all the memorabilia with that. It was delivered to the Swift family, Armor family, wrong meat company. And Steve is the third owner of this car. It came, he took it out of storage since 1956. And next, post-World War II preservation. Probably one of the rarest cars here. John White from Sacramento, California, brings us a 1962 Ghia Model L6A Coupe. This is essentially American running gear with an Italian body by Ghia Coachworks. I think this car has a movie star background, but I can't recall which one. But very, very rare car, and totally unrestored, preserved original car. All right, in micro and mini cars, this is fun. Richard Davis from Pleasanton, California, brings us a 1951 Volkswagen Model 11C split-window coupe. This was the little 
Small divided rear window as Volkswagen just began to penetrate the U.S. market. And a very rare car, very rare model, beautifully presented. And next, in the wooden-bodied car class, Patrick McHenry from Brentwood, California, a beautiful 1949 Buick Roadmaster Model 79 station wagon. This was the ultimate all-wood, wooden-bodied station wagon, beautifully restored a number of years ago and maintained meticulously by, by uh, Mr. McHenry. It's a thrill to have the car back. It was one of our early entries at, at the Ironstone Concours. And next, moving chronologically into the post-war era, Terry and Jones Spiller from Auburn, California, bringing a 1948 Cadillac Series 62 Cedanet, their fastback coupe. Beautiful modern design for the post-war market as Cadillac really uh, ensured their spot as America's leading luxury car. And it's not hard to figure out why when you look at this car. And it's 4H green. Moving slightly newer, Pete Boltice from Ripon, California. 1957 Pontiac Star Chief Hardtop. Beautiful car. Pontiac was a strong part of General Motors in the 50s. I'm sure in 1957 they couldn't imagine that the nameplate would be gone shortly into the 20th century. But it's a beautiful example and a wonderful car. And next, moving newer yet, Bob and Gail Viola from San Mateo, California, 1969, Mercury Cougar Coupe. This was Ford Motor Company's answer to moving the, the success of the Mustang into a more upscale and luxury market. This is a beautiful example of a Mercury Cougar. And next, in American convertibles post-war, David Green from Alameda, California, brings this beautiful 1953 DeSoto Fire Dome convertible. Luxury. DeSoto had a wonderful place in the upper middle price market in those years, and this is a perfect example. <laughs> and moving newer again, American Muscle Cars, Bryn and Kristen Owen from Clayton, California with a 1967 Pontiac GTO convertible. Another car that put Pontiac on the map. Beautiful example. Notice the red striped tires as it was delivered originally. Just the perfect GTO. And celebrating Chevrolet Corvettes. Larry and Sue Johanneber from Acampo, California with a 1962 Chevrolet Corvette Roadster. America's sports car. Beautiful example. Incidentally, all of our winners are getting cookies. So, in addition to a trophy. So. All right, Ford Mustang. Richard M. Hojas from El Dorado Hills, California, with a 1964 and a half Ford Mustang. The car that started the uh, 
the personal sports car, pony car market, uh, genius uh, Ford Motor Company edition, and here's a perfect example of the earliest of the Mustangs. All right. In our European uh, car class, this is a really unusual car. Joe and Gail Hensler from Sacra Fair Oaks, California. This is a 1954 French Ford Comet Monte Carlo Facel Coupe. This was the most expensive car sold in France in 1954. Has custom coachwork by Facel, which was a company that you might have heard of Fossel Vegas, which were built for a while, and you can see some styling cues in the roof of this car. But really rare car. I've never seen one before. Uh, who knows if there's another one in California. All right, everybody's favorite. From the Academy of Art University collection, Scott Stevens has brought us this 1935 Mercedes 500K Cabriolet A. And this car looks fast standing still. It's a beautiful restored example. Look at the exhaust pipes on the other side of the car. And this was the ultimate Autobahn Touring in the 1930s. Beautiful car. Thank you so much for bringing it. It was here on our stage last night during dinner, and it really set off the stage. All right, moving on to Jaguars. We had a big group of Jaguars today. I think we had 19 in all, and rising to the top, Bill Brooks, William Brooks from Santa Cruz, California, with a 1973 Jaguar E-Type Roadster. This is the later version with the V12 engine. Beautiful example. I had one of those when I was a young single buck and got a lot of tickets. So, uh, but this is a beautiful example. <laughs> and next, in our MJ, MG group, this is Bruce and Cynthia Alley from Davis, California with a 1958 MGA Roadster. MG was really the first British sports car to hit the American market, about the same time as a little bit ahead of Jaguar, I suppose, but they really made an impression. And the A was their second version and a beautiful, wonderful little car. And this is a perfect example. And one of its competitors from the Triumph Department, Wendy and Blair Matthew from Murphy's, California. They came a long way. A 1958 Triumph TR3 Roadster. Beautiful example. Wonderful cut down doors. This was open air motoring at its best. The gentleman at the stage here wrote Bill Brooks, the fellow with the Jaguar, his first ticket in Santa Cruz. <laughs> Small world. Okay. From our Ford Model A class, Bo Elgeby and Debbie Stoltman from Reno, Nevada. A 1928 Ford Model A two-door sedan. Built for four, four and a half years, starting in late 1927. Despite the onset of the Depression, Ford sold Model A's for a good reason, by the boatload. And they are a wonderful, wonderful, handsome little car. And from our Ford Thunderbird group, Deborah Clendenning from El Dorado, California, with a 1957 Ford Thunderbird. Beautiful two-passenger Thunderbird. Inspiration for the song about Daddy taking the T-Bird away, away, but apparently 
He didn't take that one. Beautiful car. A lot of fun. All right, from our commercial division, and we had a wonderful collection of trucks this year, commercial vehicles. Robert Lenini from Stockton, California, with a 1923 Ford model TT C cab truck, obviously with a tank on the back. Came out of farm service, if you read the back of the tank, and just a beautifully restored example. Ford not only put America on wheels in terms of automobiles, but for trucks and tractors as well. And here's a perfect example. What do you need, Ed? Well, he's sitting, he's sitting in it. The seats are no, they, They've been in it for a Okay, from our motorcycle class, and we had a nice big group of motorcycles this year as well. Stephen Lawrence from Alamo, California, with an incredibly rare 1952 Vincent Black Shadow. This is the dream motorcycle for motorcycle collectors. And look at this beautiful example. A Vincent Black Shadow. We don't, uh, we don't pull trailers up for awards, but we'd like to announce that this year's winner in the trailers class, in the trailer class, are Ken and Karen Rapp from Turlock with the 1957 Airstream Bubble. And they're here to collect their award. These people really know how to do a concours. You don't have to get a hotel. You just come, you, you bring your house with you, and you spend a wonderful weekend at Ironstone. They're the smart ones. And next, from our De Tomaso class, Bud and Jan Millard from Milbrae, California, with a beautiful 1972 De Tomaso Pantera. These are a wonderful blend of American engineering and Italian style and coachwork. Fantastic cars. We had a nice group of them this year and we appreciate it. And Bud and Jan Millard from Milbrae. And everybody's favorite combination Auto and Boat from our Amphicar group this year. Ted Ancona from Altadena, California with a 1967 Amphicar Model 770. I've been told that the 770 stands for 70 no 7 knots and 70 miles an hour. Not sure if that's true. But they're so generous to bring these cars here and, and in this case all the way from Southern California to play in our lake and, and entertain our, um, our visitors, and we thank them so much. Thank you. Okay. This would be the... And we get into our special awards, and, and this one honoring the FFA, the FFA award, goes to Darwin and Patricia Ludi from Chula Vista, California with a beautiful 1963 Chevrolet Corvette Coupe. Fantastic car. Some of the members of the FFA helped our judges to look the field over and this one captured their attention. A beautiful example of a Chevrolet Corvette. And 
And we're having a brief little intermission here, but uh, it will pick right back up. The special award given to honor our many sponsors who make this event the fundraiser success it is. The Ironstone Sponsors Award goes to Larry Camuto and Kirk Wendland. The beautiful 1959 Cadillac Eldorado Beer Convertible. I think this was Cadillac's largest car in the Cadillac. And award honoring our 4-H members and they help to identify a car that they like. Our 4-H award goes to Ed Karen Archer from Hayward, California with a beautiful 1906 locomobile Model A Seven passenger touring. And I'm, I'm 35 in Karen today. They're always decked out in the year of their car. And they drive their cars and they use their cars and they share their cars and we are thrilled that they come by and stone. And we're proud to give them the 40 award this year. And turn our campaign to California. They really represent the spirit of the hobby of antique automobiles. Uh, yes. And recognizing the best unrestored car on the field, in the opinion of the judges, belonging to Lynn and Michael Harling from Dallas, Texas, is a 1916 Packard Twin Six Touring Car. Again, this car is totally untouched since new. It's 103 years old, has its original finish, its original leather. It is a perfect time warp. It shows us what the cars were like when they were built. It's just a fabulous example. We should all be in that shape when we're 103 years old. The foundation board of the Iron Tone Foundation that is responsible for putting together this clam bake is pleased to give the foundation award to Tom and Joanne Martindale from Santa Cruz, California. Their incredible 1921 Page Daytona Speedster. And if you missed it last time, you got to see it this time. Joanne is still sitting patiently in her drawer. Some cars have a golf club compartment behind the front seat. This one has a passenger drawer that pulls out. A real hot rod in its era. All right, recognizing the best competition car on the field, our, our award named for Martin Swig, who was an automobile enthusiast and racer. Here's Wayne Craig to describe this car and Martin. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, as the race car director, uh, our late uh, board member Martin Swig had a real spirit for uh, start for classic cars and for race cars in particular and tours around California. And so each year we make an award to a car that we think exemplifies the spirit of that car. And this year it's the uh, Morgan four wheeler with Larry Ayers. Thank you. Most people recognize Morgans as often having three wheels. This is a four-wheeled Morgan. With an extensive race history, a great car. Larry Ayers from Vallejo, California. Well, you know, race cars don't necessarily have to have a starter. They just have to run. We're doing slow. All right, the most elegant closed car on the field. This is a real pleasure this year. Don Williams sent this car from the Blackhawk Collection in Danville, California. This is a 1951 Talbot Lago Grand Sport 
Sauchik bodied coupe, the really, really rare car. Very late in the Talbo Lago uh, history, and so you just look at the lines and the beauty of that. Sauchik was a famous designer all through the 30s, 40s, into the 50s, and this is one of the most premier examples of a Talbo Lago on the planet, frankly. It looks fast standing still. Beautiful car, and we thank you for bringing it. And the most exciting open car is a hard decision, but it's a wonderful choice. Scott Stevens, again, from the Academy of Art University collection, the 1935 Mercedes-Benz 500K Cabriolet A. Again, this was the ultimate Audubon tour from the 1930s. This series of, of cars put Mercedes-Benz on the map and uh, are some of the most highly sought after and collectible cars from the 1930s. 1935 model 500K. All right, there's only one left. The moment we've all been waiting for, the 23rd Annual Ironstone Concours Best of Show, Paul Betrovich from Sacramento with his beautiful 1930s Duesenberg Model J, convertible roadster, coachwork by Walter Murphy Company in Pasadena. This is just an iconic Duesenberg and its, its style is accentuated by the dual rear spare tires and it's recognized as one of the premier Duesenbergs in the country. Restored by renowned Duesenberg expert Randy Ema in Southern California. Just a fabulous car and we're thrilled to have it at Ironstone and we congratulate you on first best in class, best in show. Beautiful. It's, it's, one, it's a wine country car, that beautiful deep burgundy. That's a rare example. All right, you have about 35 seconds to buy your tickets to win this beautiful Honda next to me. And I'm going to relinquish the microphone and thank you for your attention. Attention, and I'd like to introduce Gail Kautz again, who's going to wind things up. I'm going to wind things up quickly because I just got an invitation to ride in this gorgeous car, and I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I, I do want to thank you all once again for coming. And this, this is your last chance to buy tickets on this beautiful Honda. Uh, if you don't like yellow, you can trade it in for Hunter Green or whatever is your thing. So anyway, it is going, going, gone, and we will pull the ticket in just a minute. Just giving you a few more seconds for the, before the drawing for this, and I'm going to go ride in this lovely critter. Thank you. <laughs>